Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, I'm John, this is many a true nerd, and welcome back to Fallout Tale of Two Wastelands, where last time, we went to vault diving, broke Butch out of Vault 101, and just while we were passing by, trashed an Enclave camp. And speaking of the Enclave, that's precisely where I want to focus today, because, uh, yes, in Fallout 3, the Enclave is a really funny old faction, which is to say, it plays a huge, huge role in the game. These are the guys that roll in and kill your dad. The entire final act of the game, they're the primary antagonist. Into the post-game in Broken Steel as well. And yet, despite that, you really don't learn too much about the Enclave. Who they are, what they want, or, if I'm going to be precise, the main plot missions do a very bad job of giving you that information. However, if you actually, you know, take your time, explore the wasteland, put a whole bunch of pieces of evidence together, you can actually come up with a really interesting understanding of who the Enclave are, why they're in DC, and where they are now relative to where they were the last time we saw them in Fallout 2. But okay, let's start at the beginning because yes, the Enclave fill a very special role in this game. A role that Bethesda just loves putting into every game they cocking make. The faction that isn't present at the start of the game, but rocks up parts of the way through, and thereafter can be found all over the world. Bethesda love doing this. The Daedra and Oblivion Gates in Oblivion, the Dragons in Skyrim, the Brotherhood in Fallout 4. Well, in Fallout 3, it's the Enclave, and that there is the key to figuring out what's going on with these guys. You may not get that much in-depth information about them from just going through the main plots, but... If you pay close attention to all their tiny bases, you can learn an awful bloody lot. So, let's start off with the absolute basics. Why are the Enclave dotted around the wasteland at full stop? Why are they not just, you know, all huddling around the purifier given that appears to be their primary objective according to Colonel Autumn? Well, to get the answer to that, we're heading in the direction of Vault 92. Here we go, straight past old Olney, try not to get spotted by any local trouble if we can avoid it, and just, just over the hill in this direction, in just a moment, get the old rifle out, we should stumble across a brand new enclave encampment. Here we go, just in the distance over there, and you may notice something rather interesting going on, which is, uh, these guys haven't noticed me as yet. But despite that, someone standing in the back of a lorry just, yeah, firing a flamethrower over and over again. So, okay, that there might be worth a bit of investigation. I'm also going to strongly advise that, yes, when you're going up against the Enclave, stay at extreme bloody range as far as you can. You do not want to be taking on these guys at, yes, a point-blank range. That's just, you know, a bad time in general. Especially when we've got... Butch, did you explode that man? And watch out in particular for, here we go, Hellfire Troops. These guys get added in by Broken Steel and they are not cocking kidding about. Even, yes, against high crit weaponry, armor piercing, etc. These guys are nasty bastards. So, locals nice and dead, let's have a look-see what we've got going on here. Because, yes, you're always going to get some lovely, lovely Enclave crates. They can contain good stuff like stealth boys, uh, plasma mines, pulse grenades, all the rest of it. Good damn bits and pieces. And what they've also very often got is uh, a working terminal. Field Operations Enclave, God Bless America. Mission Directive. Establish and enforce Enclave presence among general populace. Disposal of genetic non-compliance offenders. Monitor civilian movements in the area. And debrief superior regarding any events of notable significance or regularity. So okay, that's why you very often find these bases on roads. Because part of what they're doing is keeping an eye on the local population. But here's where things get interesting. Operation number two... Distribute purified water rations to civilians willing to submit to genetic compliance screening. Participation in screening is compulsory for all civilians. The use of force is authorised in enforcement. 3. Genetic non-compliance offenders should be detained at checkpoint. To conserve consumption of enclave resources, detainees should be disposed of by flame only when withholding facilities become overcrowded or detainees become unmanageable, whichever comes first. So, yes indeed, let's just... Uh, Go back a quick step to that very important second point there, which is a genetic non-compliance offences. Which is a euphemism, of course, as you'll be well aware if you're familiar with Fallout 2, for murdering everybody who's in the slightest bit irradiated. You need to be genetically pure according to the Enclave. 
If your DNA has been exposed to a bit of radiation out in the world, well, you're no longer genetically pure, which means you're going on the being set on fire list. So okay, this here is a good starting point to trying to figure out what's going on with the Enclave, because this is a very traditional Enclave position. In fact, it's pretty much precisely where they were in Fallout 2, given their ultimate plan on the oil rig at the end of that game was the extermination of everyone who wasn't genetically pure according to their definition of it. In the game it does specify they're anticipating a 99.5% extermination rate. And that ultimately is yes, what's happened to these poor souls in the back of the van that were being set on fire when we arrived. And crucially, pay attention to, yes, the makeup. So uh, there's a feral ghoul right over here. There is one ghoul who's not a feral, just, you know, a wastelander who happens to be ghoulified. Uh, and one guy here who's showing no sign of ghoulification whatsoever. So, uh, yeah, they're definitely not screening out just ghouls or anything. Even people who are not ghoulified are part of the being set on fire list. Also, where's Butch going? Okay, Butch is just naffed off over the hill. Hopefully he's going to be fine. But okay, let's focus on the big picture here, because you have every right to be confused at this exact moment in time, which is, uh, the last time we ran into the Enclave, uh, we were speaking to Colonel Autumn, and his plan was to take over the Purifier, basically using access to water as a mechanism for exerting influence over the surrounding settlements. Basically, he was trying a much softer approach than the let's murder literally everyone plan in Fallout 2. And when we put it in that context, this camp starts becoming a very interesting indeed, which is uh, these two objectives don't make sense together. On the one hand, uh, we've got the Enclave trying to lock down critical resources uh, in order to win over and control the local population. And on the other hand, uh, we've got the Enclave trying to murder that exact local population. It doesn't make sense. Almost like there was some kind of civil war going on in the Enclave and two contradictory objectives uh, were being pursued at once. And uh, by the end of the game, we know that that's precisely true. Colonel Autumn and President Eden are basically no longer on speaking terms. To the extent that Eden is willing to take Project Purity and turn it into a giant genocide machine, and Autumn is so opposed to that plan that Eden will specifically tell you he's not willing to work with Autumn on this anymore, he tries to recruit you instead. And this is the lens we have to view the Enclave through. Functionally at this point, they're two distinct operations working for two distinct leaders. Logical follow-on conclusion, the reason we've got camps of Enclave soldiers dotted around the wasteland trying to enforce genetic compliance screening on the wider population is because President Eden wants them to. This to my mind would strongly indicate the day-to-day -day operation of the Enclave is controlled by Eden and Autumn is the less powerful faction with much less control and knowledge of the Enclave's operations than he might actually think. Because this camp is not a one-off. Oh no, 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 no. On the contrary, this is something you'll see over and over and over again. Right now, I'm just the north of, yeah, Fort Independence, and we've got ourselves another camp where precisely the same thing is happening. On this occasion, not in the back of a trunk, but instead, yes, a dedicated special enclave cage with more dead wastelanders. And this just happens over and over and over again. There are, I think, maybe six or seven extermination camps dotted about the capital wasteland. Every single one of them, we can reasonably assume, taking orders from President Eden, not from Colonel Autumn, who quite possibly may be functioning almost as a rogue faction at this point, given, yes, the vast majority of the Enclave appears to be working completely at odds to his current plan. And to back up that assertion, there is one more crucial piece of evidence too. But we'll get back to that in just a minute because, uh, yes indeed, this may be one thing that the Enclave does. Uh, just wander around, uh, sitting on the roads, uh, gathering anyone who passes by and immediately setting them on fire. But it's not the only thing they're doing. Whether they're planning to, you know, basically murder everybody or just move in and use water as a tool of control, both factions want to pacify the region and deal with local threats that could be a problem. Which means on occasion, the Enclave can actually be somewhat useful, in the same way the Brotherhood can in Fallout 4. Areas that are extraordinarily dangerous before the Enclave show up can actually be much easier to approach now you've got some convenient power armoured backup coming in. So, for example, you may remember Longform Plaza we passed through here previously, and this place can be a little bit of a nightmare. There are many, many mutants here. I'm pretty sure I saw an overlord way up there. There's an entire half of this area I never went to go and explore, simply because it's not worth it. But, um, yes, now the Wards of Life is done, 
just going to very quickly pop a stealth boy, put my weapon away, and yes, in just a second, uh, when I pass by this central area, give it just a flipping moment. And here we flipping go, I hear the sound of an approaching vertebrate, because now the cavalry just arrived, and uh, the super mutants are very calm about that. There we go, they've realised something bad might potentially come out of, uh, you know, the vertebrate. So now these guys are going to open fire on each other, and uh, hellfire troopers are no cocking joke. They are going to do very, very well. So we have now got my enemy's enemy as my friend playing out in front of me, which is beautiful because, yes, tough enemies from Broken Steel are murdering tough enemies from Broken Steel. The cars are exploding, everybody's dying, and when the dust clears, I suspect there will be very, very little left. Okay, over on the right, it looks to me like, uh, yes, the mutants have been defeated and the Enclave have been successful. So I'm pretty sure they're now sweeping over in this direction. Yep, Enclave weaponry doing an excellent job there. Hellfire troopers, uh, no cocking joke. We've got a handful of brutes up there. That's going to be no problemo whatsoever. Now there is definitely... Uh, one overlord. That's going to be the problem right there. He's probably going to be the final survivor. But seriously, these guys are just going to stand and fight and fire. And they have got some good bloody armor. They're in good cover. Oh yeah. Now this. This is a good time right here. There is Enclave number two. In fact, that's the Hellfire Trooper. He's actually still, yeah, basically almost full condition. Okay, fight seems to have quietened down. I'm not even sure where the survivors are because, uh, yes, the Hellfire Trooper eventually went down having killed, like, probably a good 10 mutants. Good job that guy, quite frankly. But, um, yeah, I assume there's possibly one master somewhere, probably very badly wounded. I don't even know where he is. So, uh, this area, which is a complete cocking nightmare normally, uh, yeah. Simplicity itself literally took itself out thanks to the Enclave. And as it's nice and safe, I may as well, yes indeed, help myself to a nice big book of science right here that was previously guarded by an overlord. But yes, the Enclave took him out for me. Marvellous. Arguably though, yes, the biggest intervention comes right outside the Capitol building. So just uh, sneak on up, start heading in this direction. Obviously we have got giant piles of Talamokes, we have got super mutants, and uh, once the Waters of Life is done, we've got some extra assistance popping along too. Here we go, I see plasma starting to be spit out into the world, which is always a marvellously good sign. So yes, indeed, just uh, make sure we stay away from any trouble. Don't worry. Okay, never mind, I've been immediately spotted. I'm sure this is all absolutely fine, though. Don't mind me. Please leave me alone, in fact. There we go. Just uh, no Chinese assault rifle for you. Lovely. Just uh, mosey on in this direction. If anything, yeah, just make sure we lead the Overlord uh, straight into my new best of friends, the Enclave. Uh, lovely. Just uh, back off as best we can. Uh, leave them to it, to be honest. And uh, yes, indeed, once again, we've got ourselves... Oh, hang on. Okay, it's time to bring in some reinforcements. I'd forgotten about this. Yes, this particular landing group on this vertebrate, they brought a friend with them. So just uh, mosey on around the back. Hopefully don't get spotted, if at all possible. Just, you know, enjoy Wibbly physics. Okay, we've got death claws, we've got Wibbly physics. There goes the death claw. The death claw has jumped out and is now taking on a super mutant overlord for me, which is beautiful. Someone else is wibbling out. It's probably just a corpse. Don't worry about it and... Uh, Oh yeah, the Overlord will easily win, to be honest. But they're going to do some good damage on the way. And yes, indeed. Looks to me like everything's calmed down a bit. Probably the Enclave are dead at this point. But they almost took out an Overlord, which is quite frankly very impressive. Also, I did just realise Butch isn't with me anymore. I think I just left him in Longform Plaza. So, okay, hopefully I remember to go and pick him up later. Probably not, to be honest. And just returning to Seaward Square for a second, here's one I find especially extra cool, which is uh, it is not just troops on the ground. On the contrary, because they've got vertebrates, uh, sometimes you see the Enclave exerting air superiority. So just uh, 
mosey on round the corner to, yes, the Capitol building again, just round the other side. And what we've got ourselves is, yes, a fight between Talon Company and Super Mutants. And both of those guys will fight the Enclave. Meaning, oh yeah, a flipping mini nuke bombing run right there. Though I will say, that didn't work out very much in favour of the Super Mutants. Basically, they just bombed the Super Mutants enemies for them and left the mutants pretty much mostly okay. They'll even just do flyovers occasionally. So yes, one good example is right here in Tacoma Park. There we go. As you pass by the shop, a Vertibird passes overhead. It doesn't attack you. It doesn't drop off troops. It's just there, you know, as a nice reminder. Hey, the Enclave exists. They're here now. Just don't forget they're there. The one thing I do like, by the way, is uh, Bethesda didn't just allow the Enclave to have it all their own way. They actually set up multiple scenarios uh, where the Enclave uh, fail, where their camps are overrun, or when you stumble across them, they're about to be overrun, which is delightful. Here we go, we're at the far west of the map here, just a bit to the north of a good shade, and uh, yes indeed, I've not been in this camp before, I'm only just arriving, and things are not looking so hot in this bit of the world. We've got ourselves uh, things are not over, we've got plenty of a dead enclave, a dear oh flipping dear. And as for why that might be, I would suggest that yes, they picked a very, very bad spot to set up their camp, given it was uh, literally directly above uh, the entrance to the Yao Guai Tunnel. So, uh, right, good chance just a giant pile of bears at some point came up and decided they were not happy about the Enclave living in their house. My absolute favourite bit of the wasteland striking back against the Enclave, however, comes a little bit further to the north, at a location we've already visited. So I'm just going to mosey on back to Shale Bridge... And from here I'm going to wander due south or straight down back towards Broadcast Tower KT-8, which we activated previously. Here we go, I see some vertebrates doing a flyover, but on this occasion, shot out of the sky by the super mutants guarding KT-8. Which is just absolutely beautiful, that you just get that lovely fireworks show, so... Yes, indeed. The Enclave are doing very, very well indeed. You know, they've secured a lot of the roads, but not everything is entirely going their way. So, okay, that's two objectives right there. Set people on fire and pacify the local dangers. Mutants, Talon Company, basically everything. In fact, in many ways, yes, part two is just a subset of part one. That we could just label as Operation Kill Everything. But, 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 but. There is one more thing the Enclave is doing in the Capital Wasteland, and uh, I'd argue it's by far the most interesting. Because uh, they're not just doing murder, they're also doing science. Okay, back to the Robot Repair Center. This is what we were looking down at right towards the start of this episode. Because yes indeed, you may notice this place looks a bit different from the other camps we've been seeing. Specifically, way more automated defense. So, uh, how about we just start? Uh, yes, knock down that individual with a one a quick shot. No need to worry about everyone else though. Maybe just uh, back away for a second till they all calm down and stop worrying about the sniper. And what I'm going to do now is just a very quickly activate a stealth boy, sneak into the camp past all their defences, uh, and go and have a lovely look at this individual uh, right over here, because, uh, yes indeed, this individual uh, is rather interesting. Just want to, okay, possibly I'm not as sneaky as I wish I was right now, just Target maybe may get straight range. past you. Don't, don't mind me, don't mind me, don't mind me, don't mind me! You may notice right now I'm being uh, very, very shot. Well, that's okay, because I'm about to get myself the experimental row ID. And straight away, the firing stops, because now the automated defences are going to leave me alone. Sadly, they won't actually help me take out other Enclave members, which is a bit of a shame. But aside from that small issue, they are now basically my new best friends. And if we just have a quick look inside this research terminal, we'll get a proper explanation. Department of the Army Research and Development Field Operation Sector 693R. Welcome! You have been chosen by our great president to participate in this Camp Row experiment. We have strategically deployed you to test out our newest technology, the R76H30 chip, here and referred to as the Row Chip. The Row Chip sends out a short range signal that will allow you to freely wander this and only this camp under the protection of the provided armaments. 
it is suggested you do not remove this card for any reason, as the defense systems will only recognize the person in possession of the road chip. So yes, plain and simple, this was basically an experiment into automated defenses and a special card that sent out a signal identifying the holder as a friend. Though, yes, possibly this area could have done with a tiny bit of work to improve it because there is the slight issue that, um, yeah, it won't actually take out Enclave personnel even though they're not holding the rogue cards. Seriously, this guy does not have a rogue card on him. Why precisely with the turrets not firing on this guy? And as the terminal implied, it only works on this camp. It does not make you safe from any other camp. And uh, to my mind, I find that a little bit disappointing. Like, it would be cool if you bothered to find this, that going forward, uh, you'll be safe from uh, all Enclave turrets. So, uh, it's an area that could have done with a tiny bit more work fleshing it out. But yes, uh, one, remember that this was the experiment they were doing. And two, recall the exact wording on the terminal. You have been chosen by our great president. So, okay, this might just be, you know, a template that they filled in when they sent people out to do experiments, but you could also choose to read this as further evidence that the person who's really in charge of the Enclave is President Eden, and Autumn is significantly out of the loop. And as I say, this is only the first of our many science experiments the Enclave are running. Step the next, I've made my way back to, yes, the one location I seem to never be able to escape from, good old Jury Street Metro. And here we go, my destination. We've got a camp by an unmarked location, and uh, this one should potentially be ringing alarm bells immediately. After all, the camps we've seen so far have overwhelmingly been right on the road. So why is this one out in the middle of nowhere, right next to a crater? Well, actually, there's a really bloody good reason for that. Although, yes indeed, tragically the camp itself does have turrets and, uh, as you can see, they completely do not care about the road card. A missed opportunity to my mind. The road card should work on all turrets. But as I say, the interesting thing here isn't actually the camp itself. Rather, it's the fact it's right next to this crater and just uh, nip into this crater down over here. And you may notice, we've got an Enclave Scientist. So, just to knock him down, no problem with him whatsoever, because, uh, yes indeed, there's a very specific reason the Enclave are in this exact location, and it's because of this truck in the crater right here. Just have a mose up to that, you may well recognise this already. Alien cocking power cells. This truck was carrying alien power cells, uh, and that's the entire reason the Enclave set up that camp there. This scientist is gathering up the power cells, investigating them. These guys, and they were just the escort for the science team. Oh, and perfect timing. I was just cracking into the terminal around the camp. That's just enough to let me level up. We'll get to that in just a second. And would you believe a yet another mention of our great president? So whether or not you can, you know, take that at face value, it may well be further evidence that Eden is running a big complicated R&D program that on this occasion is gathering samples of the crater, and we know what those samples are, it's alien technology. And in honour of that, how about I give myself a yes, some energy weapon skill, lovely, and a tiny, tiny bit of sneak too, marvellous. Oh, we're nice and simple. I shan't say no to Math Wrath for my level 24 perk. And honestly, I do find this one of the really interesting untold stories of Fallout 3. How many bloody factions are interested in trying to crack the secrets of alien technology? Because we have seen in the basement of the Outcast Fort, they were studying alien tech. The Enclave here, they sent a science team exclusively to try and get their hands on it. So... I am wondering whether at some point in Fallout 5, we might actually get a proper in-game acknowledgement of a 1, alien technology, and 2, the race to unlock it. And yes, I know there's Mothership Zeta in Fallout 3, but that kind of lives in its own separate pocket universe that no one ever acknowledges again. Now you might reasonably assume that yes, trying to crack the secret of alien power would be the ultimate science experiment the Enclave were performing, but... Oh no, 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 we're just getting started, so uh, head to the Temple of the Union, and from that location, head a bit to the west. And here we go, just to the west, there's the large power plant nearby to Minefield, just hope you orientate yourself. We've got a very small camp with barely anyone inside it, but, 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 the terminal is rather intriguing. So here we go, a research terminal, and uh, yes, this is one of, I think it's four camps dotted around the wasteland uh, that have observations uh, about the local fauna. 
And inherently, this is pretty cool, because it does give you a really good overview as to, yes, what these creatures used to be, how they evolved, uh, just fun bits of it, information about monsters in the Fallout universe. In fact, yes, these terminals that the Enclave just leave and dots around the wasteland uh, are possibly the most comprehensive source of information about Fallout creatures uh, in the entire bloody franchise. And okay, this one doesn't give us any information we didn't already know. The speculation being here that the giant rad scorpions we run into are, yes, what was originally the Emperor Scorpion, a common pet in pre-war America that just got big because of magic radiation juice. Okay, fine, interesting, but the really interesting bit is if we just, uh, yeah, scroll down a tiny bit. Here we go, the humble mole rat. So, subject most closely resembles the heterocephalus glaba with enlargement due to heavy radiation. While much larger in size than generational ancestors, the local variety seems to have similarly low brain function, possibly due to an exceedingly tiny brain organ. Subjects and sizes show increased enamel and dentine growth, making them razor sharp. Further study reveals extremely low levels of substance P, giving the subject an incredible tolerance to pain. I will take skin samples of my next subject, as I believe the lack of substance P could be spliced and manipulated for beneficial research. But this theory requires testing in a more fitting lab, so yes indeed. These terminals covering the various animals in Fallout 3, they're not just for fun. They weren't just, you know, making a nature documentary. They were looking for advantageous traits they might be able to splice, but... Why precisely would the Enclave be looking for, you know, stuff they could splice together? What's the end game? And uh, we can figure that out too. That's right here in Fallout 3. In fact, you saw it earlier this very episode. So let's nip back up to the, yes, cold, grey, northern waste of the Capital Wasteland. Because uh, last time I was passing by here, there was one location I very specifically chose not to go into. And that was the Death Claw Sanctuary. And that's because, yes, at this point in the game, the Enclave have shown up, and that means that things are about to start getting very bloody interesting around this bit of the world. So we've got ourselves death claws everywhere, Hellfire Troopers doing a very good job, it must be said. Those bastards will just tank it all cocking day long. So, uh, yes indeed, he's managed to... He actually won! Well done! Luckily, he was left weak enough that, yes, a single shot will finish him off, which is just magnificent. So, okay, this here, excellent start as far as I'm concerned. And here's what we wanted to see. Say hello to the new and improved Deathclaw, which you may notice is wearing a very snazzy hat. The Enclave Mind Control hat, in fact. Which I would show off a bit more in detail, but, uh, yes, I'm gonna be honest, his head did kind of just explode. So yes indeed, there are two reasons you might want to wait until now to pop into this bit of the world. Number one, the Enclave taking on the Death Claws for you makes your life a whole bloody lot easier. And two, yes, it teaches you a lot about what the Enclave are after because Death Claws are not naturally occurring. Back pre-war, the US Army spliced them together out of Jackson Chameleon DNA. The idea being they could just release shock troop monsters straight at the enemy, though they were never deployed in the pre-war world. Seemingly, they never really got it working right. In Fallout 2, the enclave of that game picked up the project again, but once again didn't quite get it working. The problem being, they got too smart, basically refusing to work for the enclave anymore and going and setting up their own society in the remnants of Vault 13. And in Fallout 3, they're trying again, but yes, it would appear they finally found a way to succeed. Just take Death Claws and plug on a lovely mind control helmet. That seems to be doing the job, and based on what we've seen elsewhere, so for example, say, you know, outside of this camp right here, we also had another camp right outside Old Olney, another major Death Claw nest, and on top of that, that note saying, hey, let's gather genetic material we might be able to splice into other creatures, and I think we can come up with a pretty solid idea as to what the Enclave wants to do. They're trying to create an army of Death Claws, but the Death Claws still aren't bloody good enough. They're looking to make them better. Still, while we're here, I think it would be remiss of me not to nip inside the Death Claw Sanctuary. And if nothing else is a fun reward just for making it inside, we do also get the Endurance Bobblehead. Lovely. So damage resistance up by a permanent 5%. I shan't say no, and Nikola Tesla and you as well. Fortunately, yes, in Fallout 3, Death Claws actually aren't that dangerous thanks to the Dart Gun, so all we need to do is just, uh, yes, find one lovely isolated Death Claw. 
here we go. There's one right there. Just pop him in the head with the beautiful dart gun. He now can't run, and he also can't do his jumping attack. So at that point, just go over to, yep, weapon of your choosing. Back away slowly. Just pop bullets in his head until eventually he falls over. Enough crit should also uh, take care of business. There's a crit. There's another. My luck is ridiculous. Couldn't quite do it in one round of that, but job done. Nice and simple, yeah, thanks to the dark gun, not a problem. And on top of all the rest of it, this is why you want to wait to nip inside. Now, there is a brand new unique weapon that spawns in this cave, but only if the Enclave exists. And here we go, Jack ignores DT and DR like most rippers would, but this one comes with a bonus crit chance. So yeah, if you're a melee user, lovely weapon to have. Though let's be honest, there's one real reason why you actually want to come here. Jack is a nice bonus, which otherwise you would completely miss. But, 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 oh, a hello sexy. Right at the bottom, in a pool of blood, it's a vengeance. Damage 10, a DPS 299, an absolute beast in the base game of Fallout 3. Obviously, yes, in a world where there's damage threshold, not as good as it would be in the base game, but still, electron charge packs as an energy type ammo does come with a tiny bit of DT reduction, so uh, at the bare minimum, you can bypass some light armor. So, take all the information we've got from, uh, yes, the various science teams and put it all together. We've got an enclave that's trying to recruit and improve the Deathclaw soldiers it's already got. They're doing more testing into automated defences. They're working on cocking alien technology and... Uh, I think we can put together a picture of precisely what the Enclave's doing, and it makes complete sense for the faction at this point in their history, which is their strength in Fallout 2 had been technological superiority. They had better weaponry, better armor, better everything. But by the end of Fallout 2, that lead was starting to be eroded. Their bases had been taken. Their weaponry had been seized by the Chosen One. The Brotherhood were starting to sniff around vertebrate plans, looking to develop their own. We had, by the end of Fallout 2, a faction that desperately relied on its tech lead to survive that had lost its tech lead. So what do we get in Fallout 3? A faction that's desperately trying to restore it. Although that's not quite true, is it? Following the assassination of President Richardson and the collapse of the Enclave leadership at the Poseidon oil rig at the end of Fallout 2, naturally, there's a bit of a power vacuum. So we've got this crisis going on where there are two distinct factions. Eden, who wants to stick to the old ways, reassert tech superiority, hence the terminals reading, your great president has told you to do this, leading into a policy of basically universal genocide. But on the other hand, we've got Autumn, who sees the Enclave's weakness as a chance to try something new, seizing key strategic resources and using them as leverage to exert power over the surrounding areas. But if you pay close attention to what the Enclave is actually doing out in the wasteland, it feels like, yes, 99% of the orders are coming from Eden, not Autumn. Autumn has most definitely been effectively frozen out of the command structure. Or at least at the bare minimum, as I wander home to, yes, just uh, put my bobbleheads on display. That is growing nicely, by the way. That's my take on it, okay? 100% you have to read between the lines a bit, but I do think there's a lot more interesting stuff going on with the Enclave than you get just by playing through the main missions. And yes, having completed my whistle-stop tour of a huge number of Enclave faces, uh, how about we call it apart for now? Because, uh, yes, this has been a very speculative episode. Hopefully, you found it interesting, though. Next week, we'll get back to something a bit more traditional, though... Uh, I'm going to be honest, it's going to be a mystery episode because uh, I've not decided uh, what it's going to be. So uh, hopefully you are looking forward uh, to that. But in the meantime, I've been John. This has been many a true nerd. And this has been Fallout, Tale of Two Wastelands. Thank you very much and goodbye. If we just hide the bodies, nobody needs to know about this. Yes, my stupid, stupid plan has worked. It turns out I'm a genius. The giant rat scorpion is not gone. Oh, hang on. There's, there's more yet, though. I'm still being very shocked. Guys, where's the NCR? Nobody needs to know.